Well, uh, I think that next up, we have some lightning talks that I think I'm going to hand it over to Christine to walk us through those. Thanks so Thanks. much. Sorry. Thank you, Grace, for that. And thank you for moderating the session. Thank you to the documentation team, to Robia and to Jen for your presentations. Um, we'll be going in straight to our lightning talks. We have three lightning talks focused on mobile and offline solutions. And in our lightning talks, we have our, uh, our three presenters will be having the first solution will be M Zima, uh, which will be done by Ada Yang, Simon Savia, and Sam Bogwa. Will then be followed by um, presentation on Rwanda oncology screening with M Muzima as well. And we'll be having uh, Todd Addison and um, Joshua doing the presentation. And then finish off with a 3.0 offline mode support community health workers, which will be done by Grace. So to start us off, uh, we'll be starting with um, Ada and Tim. Um, if you can be sharing your screen and I preparing my timer. And let me know when you're ready. Oops. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, now we can see your screen. Okay, great. Good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Ada Yuan from Uzima team. Um, today we would share some implementation highlights with everyone. Um, we will first start with talking about uh, an overview about uh, Uzima mobile health application and how it works. And we'll also um, show a brief demo video, um, how a HTS form is being filled and a few implementation highlights uh, for Mozambique, Kenya, Uganda, and Rwanda. And end with uh, the recent media highlights. So Uzima um, start with a letter M, M stands for uh, mobile. Uzima is uh, means health in Swahili. It's uh, OpenMS mobile client. Uh, we use the same OpenMS data model and um, um, store the data directly into OpenMS database. So there's no external data storage need. Um, it can be used outside for uh, outside of EML health facilities. For example, it's being used for uh, programs such as uh, patient tracing, outreach, home-based uh, services, and also different type of can screening counseling. Um, it also can be served as a point of care when um, access to health facility server is not possible. And it can also be an alternative um, to be used uh, when conventional EML you know, um, is not be be able to install um, maybe due to the uh, physical uh, facilities um, set up. And this is a brief mo uh, VV model how OpenMS and Uzima interact. We use the same exact same um, OpenMS definitions like cohorts, lists, and uh, form templates, uh, which is kind of encounter uh, forms and uh, concepts and the users and we use the same OpenMS um, authentications um, for the users to log in and to retrieve um, the patient information and vice versa. Um, in case everyone, anyone is interested in uh, about Uzima and how to contact us and um, this is the information um, you, can, um, um, you can reach us. And we, on every Wednesday, we also have the community call that we welcome um, implementers and developers and other institute or individuals who are interested in uh, being part of the community. And here are um, some features that I would like to highlight and um, share with, uh, with the team about the Uzima um, feature. I will just do it very brief and I will share the link later after the presentation so that you guys can uh, look at it in more um, detail. Um, we, we emphasize on the security, everything is encrypted. Um, it can be also customized to use, uh, be used for different use cases. So it's not just to limit to HIV or TB or certain um, care program, um, just to open MRS. Um, we use the same data collection tools that it can be easily developed. And I will show you like um, how the Uzima form look like. And one highlight is how Uzima is being worked um, both online and offline. Um, when it's offline mode so that um, the help 
community health workers can bring the um, the device with the patient information, they can proceed with uh, providing the services uh, in remote area or when mm -hmm. where they do oh, not have mm -hmm. the connectivity to the um, to the um, EMR. Mm -hmm. um, our resolutions, uh, we re realize that because of the offline components, sometimes it's um, easy to um, create duplications for um, for the same client, so but we have a mechanism that to catch those potential duplicates uh, once those payloads being processed in the open site, and we also have a UI to resolve those nicely. Um, the farm management, so as you know that you know a lot of mobile application when they have a new version of the forms um, need to be um, rolled out. It usually require the um, the users to uh, reinstall the APK. However, for Uzima approach, uh, we don't need to reinstall the APK. We simply uh, let the users to um, get us, uh, to sync to the server and get the latest um, uh, form templates to download. So there's no need for reinstallation. Uh, we also have um, the cohort management. Um, so because um, the device has like, limited storage and performance um, and also um, um, the community health workers, they don't necessarily need to bring the whole, you know, the EMR uh, patients, you know, with them on the device. So we have a mechanism also to define like a subset of what the health workers need so that those can be available uh, to use um, during the offline mode. Um, it also, uh, not only we can collect the information, we also have the historical data view so that um, the providers or the users can also see the historical information to make um, decisions um, while they're providing service uh, in remote area or offline. We support uh, six different um, languages so far, and uh, we also provide, um, mod, you know, dark theme and um, light theme just to, so that um, uh, users have their own preference. Um, we also um, incorporate the relationships uh, features uh, so that uh, relationship can be also set based on the OpenMRS um, relationship uh, model and um, so that it doesn't need to create, um, you know, um, new record and then not be able to link them. Uh, we also have the clinical summary, kind of like one page to include uh, um, the information on one page. Um, and we also have the geomapping. This is a feature to, to help to provide um, the providers like the best way to reach their um, clients and also have um, being pinpoint the clients um, on one Google map so that the, um, the providers can also make decision which one to go and um, um, uh, visit first. Now I'm going to um, just to do like a, a brief demo on the um, on the videos of the uh, Uzima. So um, this is log in screen is the using the same uh, OpenMRS credential to log in. Uh, we're able to search the patients um, by name, ID. We also have the features to search the clients uh, with the smart cards, barcode and fingerprints as well. This is how to search for the form. And then the form is um, being filled currently. And um, as I mentioned earlier that, you know, um, Osima can work on both online and offline. And um, when the, um, um, so that for example, when they search for clients is not available on the device, they, if the connectivity to the server is available, the, um, the user can um, the search against the server in real time and then to download the additional um, new client. Uh, for the scenario that if um, um, connectivity to the server is not possible. So the provider can uh, fill out a registration form offline and then to proceed with other clinical care uh, services. And once those payloads sync back to the server, um, we will capture that um, whether this, you know, um, this is a true case of new client or this client already have an existing potential duplication um, in the server. If that's the case, they can merge the two records. There you go. Okay. So now here are some uh, implementation highlights uh, because it's limited time, I will just uh, go through briefly. Um, 
currently is being uh, implemented in three districts in uh, Mozambique. Uh, it includes the patient tracing program, the INDESK testing program. The INDESK testing program is when um, the INDESK patients give the consent to um, uh, to the program, and then uh, the counselors would reach out to uh, contact the related persons and do the screening and testing. Uh, for the patient tracing program is uh, similar to the follow-up, uh, lots to follow-up, and also um, uh, kind of like a courtesy um, uh, checking, especially after the clients just recently stopped the ART to make sure that they're doing okay. Um, other implementation highlights in Kenya um, is being used um, nationally for the EHTS program and um, it's being screened, um, it's been a uh, surf screened over like um, 600,000 uh, 600, clients so far. Um, it also being used for chronic disease management uh, program and here's some information that uh, you can see here. And um, it also being uh, developed for uh, supporting the DREAM program. Uh, for Uganda, uh, it's being piloted in health facilities uh, for the um, uh, for the lost lost to follow program and plan to know, uh, roll out nationally. Um, their setting is a little bit different from um, uh, other implementation because uh, for the Uganda implementations, they uh, each of the server actually is disconnected. So there's some customization um, to help them to get that um, set up differently. For Rada, um, I think Todd and uh, Joshua and team would uh, highlight more later in the lightning talk, so I'm not going to talk too much about this. And here's a couple of recent highlights that uh, in the media that um, by the Nation Africa, and um, they have like an interview uh, with the program. Um, they use the Uzima and how um, this actually uh, improved the uh, clinical flow and also serving better for the, uh, for the patients. And uh, another recent highlights is uh, by the USAID, USAID blog and um, how this is also improved um, in care. So this is the information that um, you can contact us and thank you so much, everyone. Um, thank you, Ada, for your presentation. Um, moving on quickly, we'll then move on to Todd and Joshua. Hello. So my screen should be coming up now. My name is Todd Anderson. I'm with Partners in Health Rwanda, uh, and it might be working. Um, and I'm, I'll be talking with Joshua about the screening program here that Ada just introduced. About a year and a half ago in Rwanda, the Ministry of Health, along with Partners, uh, Partners in Health and CHAI, later joined by BioVentures Global Health and WHO. Uh, I'm seeing chats, just a moment. Okay, good. Uh, along with these partners, decided to digitize the National Oncology Screening Program for breast and cervical cancer in order to connect patients better across the levels of referral. The challenge was that while OpenMRS existed across many, most of the public hospitals in Rwanda, these were disconnected servers primarily oriented at HIV. So we selected Muzima to be the software to build directly onto OpenMRS and be used uh, from a national server following patients who are initially seen at health centers. They might have labs that get sent away to the hospital. They, depending on those labs, may get referred for cryotherapy and leap or ultimately go to some of the national referral hospitals for chemotherapy and radiation. The district hospitals do have consistent internet and will use the OpenMRS web UI, while the health centers will get some network connection and will generally be operating offline using tablets running Muzima. So far, we've gotten up to just about 400 users in the country across six districts, nine hospitals, and 105 health centers. Now to Joshua, one of our software developers on the patient flow. Hi everyone, I'm Joshua. So we're going to take an example of a cancer screening uh, patient being, a patient being screen, uh, screened for cancer screening. 
for cancer, sorry. So let's take an example of a patient screened for cervical cancer. This patient is seen at the health center and uh, created, um, and the, 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 uh, the created, um, yes, and created in Muzima, which is uh, offline. And then the clinician fills the lab request that matches the lab sample sent to the hospital. They will need to sync data to open MRS so that this patient record is accessed at the, uh, at the hospital laboratory who uses open MRS to feed in lab results. And due to two-way sync um, of Muzima and open MRS, the results will be seen back uh, to the health center. Um, and the health center will access whether they refer, whether to refer the patient to the hospital for further management. Uh, the hospital receiving the patient who is referred will be able to access the patient uh, cancer screening history. Thank you. Todd? Thanks, Joshua. This enabled us using Muzima to spin this system up relatively quickly with the OpenMRS integration. It stayed consistent with the national solution of OpenMRS while functioning offline at the different health centers, working across districts and levels of care from health centers to hospitals to, ref to referral centers. However, uh, we have not successfully connected this to existing hospital or health center systems. Uh, and this especially has led to some data challenges at the referral level where the systems already exist in a relatively mature state. And it has required some work in the maintenance, especially as the system grows in users, updates to the system and uh, syncing back and forth across. In the future, we'll be adding SMS, including to the patients, uh, lists of patients for follow through, research reporting, and connection to these national referral hospitals. Thank you very much, and happy to hear any questions in chat. Great. Thank you, Todd. You had a few more minutes spared. Any quick question? All right. Um, if not, just post them on the chat window. We'll then move on to our final presentation, which we'll get from Grace. Thank you so much. All right, uh, let's dive in here. I'll just go ahead and share my screen. So um, I, I apologize that people have to hear my voice again. I, our um, the, the folks who've been leading this particular feature of 3.0 uh, happen to all be on vacation today, so I'm just backing them up. But um, in the micro front end squad, we've had two particular organizations uh, uh, who came together on this topic, and that was uh, MECOM and AMPATH. And um, both had a similar problem for the users that they serve. I'm just going to zoom in on our wiki page here. Um, so both had situations where they needed to be able to support health workers who are going out into the community. Um, now, of course, we're all familiar with the situation where you have a health center or a health post that doesn't have reliable internet. Um, but the main problem that both were hoping to solve was this uh, portable uh, worker who's out in the community. Uh, and so that's been the that's been the focus, this offline outreach worker scenario rather than offline sites uh, for this work so far. Um, so for example, uh, the first user that we looked at was the HIV outreach worker. Then uh, that quickly expanded to the hypertension peer project also at AMPATH um, and the HIV testing services in the community. But um, very soon we'll also be looking at uh, users such as counselors and psychologists and physical therapists who are out and about rather than at a particular site or a particular office. So uh, what was the process that we used to go um, and investigate what we needed to do? Well, uh, first of all, we tried to understand the workflows of these different users and we conducted user experience research. We've been keeping track of different UX research questions we've worked through and uh, offline and community health worker workflows was one of them. So we conducted a number of um, interviews with some retention workers at AMPATH and had a number of key takeaways. Uh, so based on those interviews, uh, we proceeded with putting together some designs. 
uh, we learned things like um, the forms that they look for, uh, the workflow that they're typically trying to do. Um, so one thing I'll quickly notice what I'm um, what I'm doing right now is I'm showing folks our designs, and then I'm going to finish this lightning talk with a couple uh, real demos of the work that's happened so far, although this is very much in progress. Um, so first of all, you're going to identify what forms you want to be available offline. So for example, um, I likely want the defaulter form and my peer delivery agent form to be available offline, um, or uh, perhaps I need to change that. So uh, once I've identified those things um, previously, then when I later on come back in, uh, so mo most of the community health workers in these cases will have uh, tablets in these particular programs. So I'll come back and as you can see, um, it's also single sign on with uh, OpenMRS 3.0. So um, what we're trying to also prevent is a situation where uh, data gets overwritten between different users using the tablet. So we're trying to make sure that if a user forgot to upload the data, there's a workflow that um, prevents people from accidentally overwriting it and more intentionally uh, acknowledging that uh, they've removed that data. So um, now let's imagine we have a patient, Agnes here, who we want to make sure we follow up within the community. So I'm going to add Agnes to a particular follow-up list. Could be named anything, but in this case, we're just gonna call it offline patients. So let's add Agnes to that list. Um, Agnes has now been added to that list. Uh, that also um, makes her chart available. So uh, you can you can download it or stop the download of her of her chart, uh, and then it'll let you know if there were any particular items of Agnes's chart um, that that didn't download properly. So now let's imagine that you're the community health worker and you're going out into the community and you have a number of patients you need to follow up with specifically. So you have this uh, little dashboard, your offline home, that shows you the, the patients that are kind of scheduled on your list to follow up with. Um, any errors that have happened in their in their chart, uh, and any other columns or information that you want to see there. And you can see um, other, other general actions that you've been taking, any uploads that have failed. You can see right now that I'm currently offline. I'm gonna skip through that. Uh, now let's say that I do, um, let's see I open, say I open my list. So um, you can see that right now uh, I want to update these patients um, before I go out into the community. I'm going to click update and then that's going to let me know. Um, it, oh, oh, if I'm back in internet and I have some forms that I've completed, it'll automatically um, upload those previous actions that I've taken. Uh, and what else do I want to show before I show you the, the demo of what's been done so far? Um, so I think I've shown you uh, these different uh, lists that you can look through. Recognition of a successful upload. And finally, what if I just wanna look at Agnes's chart, but I'm offline right now? So uh, we've basically configured things to have an offline specific summary so that I can see things that, for example, a retention worker might be interested in, such as, um, being uh, having missed a previous appointment at a particular location and service, uh, some relevant conditions, active medications, particularly if I if my job entails medication adherence counseling, and so on. Um, now I can see there have been a couple offline actions that we have done, and I might want to do a new form while I'm seeing Agnes. So I'm going to select the defaulter form, and I'm going to go ahead and complete that form. But what does that actually look like um, in terms of what we've developed so far? So I'm gonna go ahead and show a couple short videos that will show you the development work that has actually been ongoing just to bring this to life. So right now I'm looking at a patient chart and I'm online, but let's switch this to being offline and see what happens. So I'm going to go offline and as you can see, oops, I don't know why, sorry folks, I don't know why my video just went blurry. Um, but as you can see, it's recognized that uh, we are now offline. There we go. Focus is back. All right. And when I go back online, it recognizes that we are back online. Uh, so I can also complete a form for Carol. 
I'm going to go ahead and open up a example form, a vitals form. You can see that some of the UI is still being done for forms. And I'm going to complete the data for her. A couple other things that I'd like to demo. Okay, so let's show a bit more about what it's like to fill and edit a form. This particular one that I'm about to show you is interesting because it's a drop down list of providers, which means that in order to do this particular form in offline mode, uh, we needed to support um, ha having additional data, like for example, providers that, uh, there we go. Um, since we can't actually query the database while we're offline. So I'm going to complete this form and save it. And then I'm going to realize I made a mistake and I'm going to come back and edit the form. So we now support offline editing as well. And then finally, uh, we also, since often uh, folks will be out in the community and need to register patients, we've also been working to support uh, offline registration. Let's let this video play out so you can see going ahead and registering a patient offline. Um, oops, sorry, the head there. We're going to create the patient and indeed we see a notification that the new patient has been created. So uh, obviously there's more to come on this work, um, but if, if folks have any interest in this and would like to join us in, in rolling it out or trying it out or giving feedback on the ongoing designs, we'd love to hear from you in the Micro Front End Squad. Back to you, Christine. Great. Thank you so much, Chris, uh, for the presentation and to all uh, the presenters um, on the amazing work you're doing. So 